Welcome back guys. Today we're going to learn how to dockerize and use SonarCube. SonarCube Community Edition is an open source code quality and security tool that analyzes your code and provides you with code quality and security reports. If you're building a SaaS application, then using tools like SonarCube is essential as it can be used to detect bugs, vulnerabilities, bad programming practices, maintainability scores, and much more. If you're using continuous development, then you can also use SonarCube as a quality gate in your pipelines. For example, you can use it to prevent code from being merged to your master branch if certain coverage or ratings are below a certain threshold. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build and run SonarCube using Docker Compose. Once we have SonarCube up and running, we will also learn how to set it up for your project. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with my latest training videos. Alright guys, so here's the demo. Right now, I have my Docker container running for SonarCube, and I am exposing this to port 9000. We also have a database for the SonarCube container. Let's go to our browser, and here, for my local host at port 9000, this is the SonarCube user interface. So here I configured one of my projects called just DMS. Right off the bat, we can see that there is 132 bugs, zero vulnerabilities. We'll talk about hotspots uh, later, but basically hotspots is the same thing as vulnerabilities, but those require manual review to assess that they are vulnerabilities. And in here, I have almost 1000 code smells. And uh, what those are, it means basically the code can be refactored or done better. This project has 0% coverage. Now for this one, it's not actually 0%. I just never configured the coverage part. Here we can see that I also have 8.4% duplications. Let's go ahead and click on our project name here. And we can see all this information in here. Now in here, I'm going to go to issues. And you can see here, we have all these filters on the side. So let's start off with the bugs. So here, for example, for one of my files for my project, app, console kernel.php it's saying to replace include with include once now for all the bugs it mentions here you can click on why is this an issue and you can read more about it and it will explain why you should change this let's check out some other bugs here so here for my calendar.php file it's saying um, explicitly mention the visibility of the construct so this is actually a bug so in php you need to have public function construct so i'm missing the public keyword and you can review all these bugs in here now Let's go back and let's click on code smells. And here, let's click on the first error. And here it's saying, add a nested comment explaining why this method is empty. Throw an exception or complete the implementation. So here we have an empty function. And usually it's not good practice to have empty functions. Now here, let's click on this error as well. It's saying that this line is over 122 characters. Now let's go back in here and let's take a look at the severity of the issues so here there's one that's a blocker so this is a huge issue and this is happening inside my stripe events handler.php file let's click here and let's see what the problem is and looks like here for this case we forgot to add a break statement so this is actually also a bug and you can see that just by using sonar cube i have all this insight in here let's take a quick look at the tech depth and in here, there is an estimation of time of how much you would need to refactor certain code files. So the first one is going to take four hours to fix. This is the worst file. Now let's see what those errors are. So in here, I can see we're missing the visibility of this construct. We need to add public here. Let's see what's inside here. This line's not covered by tests. Let's see what's happening in here. And you can see here, this is all the issues that it says. I hope you guys get the point. There's a lot of options that we can uh, use. I highly encourage you guys to start using SonarCube for all your projects. It will give you a lot of good insights and you could learn a lot from it as well. What I just showed you guys is just a small fraction of what you could do with SonarCube. Before we get started, you should have Docker installed. I am running Docker on Windows using WSL2. If you're totally new to Docker, I highly recommend you watch my previous Docker courses. Now, to help save time, I have already dockerized SonarCube. You can grab the code at my GitHub account. Let's go ahead and open a new tab. And in here, let's search for GitHub, EMAD, E-M-A-D, Zamut, Z-A-A-M-O-U-T. And it should be the first link. This is my GitHub account. Go to Repositories. 
and you want to find this repository sonar cube dockerized and here you can see i have a docker compose yaml file if you click on it you should see this is how you dockerize sonar cube i am exposing port 9000 and port 5432 for the database feel free to adjust these as you see fit now let's go back and let's go ahead and copy this url in here now let's go ahead and open our terminal i am using wsl2 in here let's go ahead and create a new directory i'm gonna call mine sonar cube let's go ahead and go inside that directory let's run get init then let's do get pull and let's paste our url now let's go ahead and run docker compose ps make sure docker is running and let's go ahead and write docker compose up dash d once this is done go ahead and write docker compose ps and you should see both of your containers running if you have conflict with the ports make sure you change the ports that we're exposing here now in case you guys get this error that i got before so in here inside your docker interface you can see my sonar cube exited when i try to build it it failed let's go ahead and click on this and you should see this error max virtual memory vm.max heap count is too low and saying this number that's currently set one two three four is too low you need to increase it to this number to fix this let's go ahead and copy this part here vm.max map count and let's open our terminal again you want to write sudo sys ctl minus w you want to paste in the vm.max map count and you want to set it equal to the number they provided in here which was 262144 so let's copy this and let's set it once this is done go ahead and write docker compose up minus d and let's make sure everything is running so we do docker compose ps and you can see that everything's working now i'm gonna go to the browser and let's go to 127.0.0.1 at the port that we exposed which was 9000 and you should be able to see this login page the default username is admin and the password is admin let's click login and once you log in for the first time you will need to change your password so mine was admin and i'm just going to make my new password password this is running locally so it doesn't matter now in here you want to create a new project these are all the options that you can use you can use gitlab you can make it read from github and um, bitbucket for this demo i'm just gonna use manually let's click here and go ahead and write your project name here so for my project it's a php project in laravel i'm gonna call it just tms let's go ahead and set this up now it says here how do you want to analyze your repository and i'm gonna select locally again you have all these options now in here go ahead and click on the generate button then click continue now for this step you need to download the sonar cube scanner so for my project i am using php so we click on the other for the os make sure you select your operating system i am using windows but i am running in wsl so i'm using linux let's go ahead and click linux and this is the instructions so first we need to download the scanner for linux let's go ahead and click here and in here you can see this is all the distributions so you have linux windows mac docker if you're using Linux like me, you don't need to download it. You can go to my GitHub account. When we pulled it, I have added a script in here. And the script, what it does is it just downloads Sonar Cube Scanner for you and installs it. So let's go back to our terminal. And in here, before you use the script, you have to notice that I'm using unzip. So make sure you have unzip installed. So do sudo apt install unzip. Once you have that done, go ahead and make sure that you can execute the script. So do ls minus la and uh, go to the scripts folder and in here you want to make sure that we can execute so if this is basically not green just make sure you run chmod 755 inside the scripts install sonar scanner bash script now let's go ahead and run the script once this is done you should be able to run your sonar scanner so let's go back to sonar cube let's erase this so back in here this is how you would execute your scanner so this is the code that you want to use i'm going to copy this and let's go back to our terminal in here so i'm going to go back and you want to find your project so mine's inside my websites folder i called it just tms let's do ls minus la so you can see this is my laravel files for the project i'm just going to paste in this command so copy paste and let's run it 
Now, if you get this error, sonar scanner command not found, this means that the executable is not inside our var bin folder. Inside the script, I added it inside our var opt folder. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I want you to do var slash obt, and you should find the sonar scanner. Now in here, you want to go to bin sonar scanner. If you press tab, you should have the autocomplete do this for you. So if you press here, you should see that the scanner works. So let's copy this command in here and let's make sure we execute this command that we copied from here. But instead of using sonar scanner, we're going to use what we just copied. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase this and I will paste this in here. So you can see I am using this script here and let's click enter. And now this is running for us. So it's analyzing our project. Also, while this works, by the way, I have added in my GitHub account. So if you go to here, there's a make file and this make file, it has the commands for you in here. So you can just copy it from here, but you need to make sure that you change this number in here. So that should be inside the script that you copied off Sonar Cube. Let's go back to our terminal and let's wait for this to process. Now, once this is done, let's go ahead and go back to SonarCube. So that was at 127.0.0.1 at port 9000. And you should be able to see now your project and it should be analyzed in here. Now, let's go back to our terminal and you want to make sure you copy this command that we executed for running the SonarCube. I highly recommend you guys use something like make files and... Um, so in here, for example, this is what I did. I added this to my make file. So I just do make sonar dash scan. So this is the command that I make. And every time I run this, it will basically run everything for me. Now in here, you can see I have this error. That's because I didn't update my the login code in here. So I'm going to go do nano inside my make file. And I'm going to scroll all the way down. If you guys remember, I said you have to change this to the one that was provided to you by sonar cube. So I'm just going to copy it from the command that I executed. So it was this one right here. And let's go back and edit our make file. So I'm going to write nano make file. And in here, I'm just going to replace this string. Let's go ahead and save this. Now, every time I want to run the scanner, I just write make sonar dash scan. And here we go. I run it again. This is much easier than just running that chunk of commands manually. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and we'll see you guys on the next video.